Hi there, my name is Ladrin Bex. I'm a light and sound therapist, but I also, uh, in my retreats, events and workshops, I incorporate uh, the power of emotions and to um, basically enhance and heal through those parts of us that need nurturing in this time. So what what makes a relationship work? And this isn't just romantic relationships, this could be you know, close friendships, uh, family members. It's uh, a number of things I'd like to cover that, you know, in, in my many years of understanding about spirituality, consciousness, I found that my most powerful teachers on my journey haven't been the teachers and, and prophets and books and authors that I read, but it's been relationships, especially romantic ones, you know, ones that I've, you know, been in a relationship with and have taught me about life and really dug deep to the core of my deep wounds that need perhaps healing well but not perhaps do <laughs> that um, I think the presence of a relationship helps you be aware of what needs to be healed um, understood and being aware of in our own personal development as a as a human uh, on, the, on this path. And I've had a number of awakenings with uh, relationships over the years that have really taught me some big lessons. Some pretty, not some not so pretty. Um, some very beautiful moments that I, I remember. Um, however, I don't miss those people. You know, I, I, I remember the memories and the lessons and, you know, it's like I'm in a place right now where I feel comfortable and happy being on my own and, you know, I don't feel like I, I need anyone. I would like somebody. Um, but I think it, for me, a, a relationship is a very spiritual one that it's not just about ha getting married, having children, you know, living together and and that it, it's deeper. For me, a relationship, and I could be wrong for everybody, but for me, a relationship is one that involves affection, trust, honesty. Uh, communication, which is a big, big thing, um, shared interests, like share value, um, respecting one another, like non-threatening behaviour, um, and not no dramas, and just being completely honest and open and truthful, and and moving forward. Um, however, in relationships, you know, we can be very triggered, and those triggers can be from past relationships ourselves or past occurrences that we are really triggered by and what I mean by triggered is it's the things that we're in a similar situation or what we think is in a similar situation where we hear some words that we don't like because we've been in a situation where perhaps we've been abused um, you know mentally physically um, that the presence of somebody that's showing similar traits can really make us second think things or give us red flags in a relationship which maybe put us off and this is sometimes why you can sometimes be dating somebody for a while and suddenly they're just gone you know they've found somebody else or they are having second thoughts and so yeah it's all about communication that's one big thing I find that communication is the glue to relationships is that it's important to talk you know and to sit down and but to have space as well like if you're not on the same page, then things aren't going to work out. Um, look at my previous video, which is um, called The Five Love Languages. This not my creation. It's by a guy called Gary Chapman, who's helped many, many people over the years uh, through divorces and relationship issues. Um, and those are five core like love languages, our needs that we need in a relationship to help us feel more loved and, and topped up. But I don't think it stops there with the five love languages. I think that it's important that if you don't trust each other then there's a big issue because the relationship that we have of ourselves should be one of trust like I, I trust myself you know I, I respect myself I wouldn't hurt myself um, communicate with myself I need to communicate with my feelings more perhaps um, am I honest with myself you know when I say trust it's things like can you trust your partner or even yourself to, I don't know, not binge out on those things that you have? It could be drink or alcohol or it could be um, 
I don't know, a certain food that you're not, you know, you feel guilty. Like if someone else was to see you do it, you know, do you feel guilty? Then it's like, you know, you're not having that trust with yourself to, you know, change your diet or change your habits. So it's kind of like in a relationship, you are one, you know, you're not just two separate people, although you are, you know, you have freedom, you have, it's important to have different interests in a, in a sense that you have your own life outside of your relationship but it's it's understanding you know and communication that's that's important it's trust it's communication it's a number of things honesty it's respecting one another and for me i find it's important in a relationship is that it, to not spread issues like if you have an issue with your partner it's important to sit down with them talk or communicate by text and saying hey i'm feeling like this right now or I'm feeling this for you, like, and it's important not to attack your partner, saying, you did this, you did that, because that can be very threatening. Um, one key thing that I've found very helpful in, in communication is not assuming that that person has done something, but turning it around, and because you're the one that interpreted yourself that way. So if perhaps, say, you, uh, I'm trying to find another situation, Say you had an argument with your partner and they said something you you didn't like or it triggered you. And rather than you saying to your partner, you you were very angry when you left. I didn't like the way you spoke to me. Um, I didn't like the way you answered to me in the way I was very abusive or I was very hurtful. R rather than sending that energy that way, it's important to perhaps word it to your partner saying, hey, I feel like I I've interpreted the way you spoke to me earlier. Um, the way I took it was like this. Um, if you are feeling like that, please tell me. Um, but I'm feeling like this now where I'm feeling a bit uh, triggered. Um, was that meant to come out that way? Are you feeling okay? When we do it like that, it's, it's a lot more harmonious rather than almost like an attack. And the more we keep those feelings and thoughts in ourselves uh, over time we become almost like what i describe myself is like a, a loaded spring imagine a spring that's like slinky and and bendy and it's kind of like the more you compress those problems and and anger and you know communication and empathy and and affection sometimes at the wrong times mostly you can pop out you know and spring into action the wrong way that you know things come out in, in the wrong sense basically and we can be very unthoughtful um disrespectful or we don't have the courage in ourselves to to speak our truth almost so things can get misinterpreted really bad um it all comes down to understanding relationships i'm, I'm not saying i'm I'm a master at this at all um, because I'm not in a relationship um, but these are things that I've researched myself and I find that it's important that two people in the relationship understand the whole what's going on so it's not about being a psychologist in a relationship it's not about being a therapist it's I think it's very important for every couple that's out there even if they don't have any issues themselves to to attend workshops like once a month or you know depends how much if you are fighting or not um to attend some workshops or read a book together about the subject of understanding more about emotions and relationships and and nurturing and communication and again there's lots of authors out there such as anthony robbins tony robbins uh, gary chapman five love languages is marianne williamson Bernie brown um, these are people that I've heard over the last number of years that have been very helpful uh, at times when I needed help. Uh, so, like, it, you know, it's, it's important to have an outside uh, viewpoint. Perhaps that's why you're watching this now, you know, either curious or interested what's, what's going on. Um, but I feel that it's important if you're in a relationship, um, especially a deep, connected, romantic one where you're living together, and sometimes there might be fights. I mean, it's normal to, to not fight, but to have disagreements, but to deal with it in a, in a more healthier way is, is important. So it's important to have this, not counseling, but workshops to attend, because it's like a therapist, you know, I'm a therapist and 
I, I try to do work on myself. I do healing. I, I, I listen to myself. I try to be aware of how I'm feeling in situations. And if I need help, I will, I will speak to somebody, you know, like if something's on my mind and I can't speak to my partner at the time, then um, if I can't do that, then I have an outside um, person that can assist. That's not always the best way, especially if that person knows both of you. It's important to keep those those communications, those people separate, um, to have, sometimes have an outside understanding. I have a number of friends around me who are very gifted in that area, very knowledgeable of understanding what could be going wrong, you know, or they, they come from a very place, you know, heart centered energy of like, OK, you know, have you done this or do you think it's misinterpreted that way? And it's all sometimes it's always like, ah, yeah, perhaps maybe. Thank you for, for the awareness. And so you can relook at the situation or the, or the relationship that, that you're in. And I'm not just speaking about me here. I'm talking about anybody that's perhaps watching this or out there that it's important to do the inner work. You know, it's important to do work on ourselves. And as again, I'm a therapist, like it's important to have therapy yourself. Like if a psychotherapist or someone doing psychology isn't having therapy for their own stuff, then they cannot progress and move forward. So, you know, a person who is a therapist should be having therapy too. It's like a massage therapist. They need a massage as well because, you know, they're they're doing body work all the time. If they're not uh, getting their muscles uh, relaxed and those trigger points taken out, then they can become a load of problems themselves. So it's always important to whatever we give out that we give, you know, we get back. So, you know, it's important, totally important that that work keeps coming up. Important. It's important to look after yourself in in the relationship, to, to have help, to seek outside help. And we live in a world now which is amazing better than it was 20 years ago that there's more things on youtube now than ever so if you have an issue with something if you are going through a breakup if you're going through difficulties search youtube uh, spend hours you know listening to audiobooks or ted talks on relationships understanding the root cause of the problem i mean every relationship is so vast and dynamic and unique and different um, that it could be a number of different problems. So it's important to speak to a therapist. However, if you're having doubts in your mind and this person could be abusive, uh, there's red flags there that they're not being respectful. Um, you think that you are with somebody then that perhaps they are cheating on you or seeing somebody else. It's always important to speak to your partner. But if you are having insecurities, perhaps it's important to look at some YouTube videos or um, you know seek some counselling um in case you are having issues but if you are feeling very sure that you are not being respected if you are being abused if you are all those negative things if you know if you've just not been treated right then it's always important to escape if you cannot then i'm sorry if you're watching this but if you are having problems in your relationship then sometimes it's important to, to let that go or walk away if things are becoming very abusive or hurting especially physical you should not be putting yourself at risk basically because things can get worse in in a relationship if you're not looking after yourself your well-being you know otherwise you could potentially go down the road of mental health and this is what someone told me many years ago when i was in a very controlling relationship and one friend told me that you know, it's like you're picking up an ember, an amber, you know, a piece of wood that's hot. You know, you, you keep picking it up and getting hurt. It's like, do you want to keep getting hurt? You're doing this to yourself. I'm like, you're right. Yeah, you're right. And those words really helped me at the time um, to understand, you know, what I was going through. I needed to step away because it's very simple. L if it's love, it's loving. You know, if you're in a relationship and you want love and it's loving, then great. You're loved. But if you're in a relationship and you are an abusive one that's negative, controlling, name calling, name shaming, uh, just all these negative things, then it's not love. That's that's abuse. And so you need to step away. So that's the other side of of the good things in a relationship, um, that if you are experiencing those bad things, then it's important to say, OK, can I escape for this relationship now? I need to end this because speak to that person and say how you feel. And if that person's not willing to change or not willing for counseling or, or advice, 
then it's important to step away for your own um, for your own sanity, for your own happiness, because things don't get better. And I've listened and helped a lot of people over the years um, just by being a friend, by being there, I've helped them through the situation and it, it's not got better. So the, going back to the positive side, let's leave this uh, video on a positive note that every relationship takes work. <laughs> it's not easy. If you think a relationship is what you see in the movies, what you see in story tales, you know, fairy tales of just, I don't know, the prince saving the princess and living happily ever after. And people aim for the, the, fu the finale, getting married, you know, knowing that, okay, now I'm with that person. Now they can't escape or like now I'm safe because they're not going to leave me. The relationship always needs work, you know, like if you love each other, you expect you respect each other. If you love each other, then um, you have empathy to understand each other. If you love each other, then you bond together. You find things of interest to do. And even if you don't like doing what they do, you share it anyway because it's you like being around that person. You know, you learn things. It's it's always important to check in with yourself and saying, okay, I'm, I'm out of my comfort zone, but I'm doing it for them uh, because I want to share this with them. It makes them smile. I sometimes do that, you know, it's not always things that I enjoy doing, but I'll give it a go um, to, you know, to nurture that relationship and to, you know, have respect. And it, it's it's having your presence in that relationship very, very well known. If that's either through words, physical affection, being thoughtful, remembering dates, remembering anniversaries. Um, it depends, again, how people, how the other person is, you know, if you're in a marriage and or if you were somebody who doesn't want to get married, uh, I don't know, perhaps you have to really respect their their decision there or, or speak about why. You know, perhaps it could be a childhood uh, trauma there or something that's happened in their childhood that has affected their current sort of, you know, understanding about perhaps why they don't want to get married or anything could have happened. But again, what I always say to people is that it all comes down to communication. Communication is the glue to relationships. In my eyes, in my understanding of what I've learned through relationships, is that it's important to communicate how you feel. Because um, I've been in relationships myself, and I've seen relationships dissolve and shatter away because the person was scared of opening up to the other person in case of what they thought they would say. For example, one, uh, there was two people that were in a relationship, and one person was scared of opening up to the other person because um, their partner wanted to be with them you know for the next few days and the other one had just got out of routine and so they were scared of opening up and speaking to their partner and saying hey I just need some space is it okay if like you have we just can I see you in like you know three days time or two days time I need to get things done um, instead that person you know ended everything completely and Right, you know, in, in the fear of what the other person would say, and it all comes down to communication. You know, if things were communicated in the beginning, perhaps the relationship would have kept going. Um, and it's not just about communication as in like speaking, but it's been actively listening. You know, if you're not a good listener, that's okay. Take a notepad with you, a pen, or just write on your phone and, and explain to the your partner at the time saying, I am listening, but it helps me to bullet point some words just so. I understand what's being said. Um, for me, that's my downfall. I listen, but sometimes um, I'm thinking about the last thing that they've said, and so I'm, I'm reflecting on that so I don't have any gaps. That's what I do when I listen to documentaries, personally. Like, when I'm listening, I pause, I write down a few notes, and I start listening again. So I, then I, at the end, I can reflect back on what's said. And now I try to get in the into the habit of, of writing some notes, like words down as that person speaking to me, so then I can be more aware of what's going on. Because it's like movies, I have to watch movies three or four times sometimes to um, understand what's going on. Because me, I'm, I'm a big daydreamer. You know, I can be listening to somebody and I'm listening to them and then I'm in a daydream of what they were talking about a while back and thinking about that because I'm so absorbed, but I don't have that time to reflect or that, that time out time. Uh, to do stuff so anyway um, keep it positive you know a relationship should be fun loving romantic sensual um, erotic <laughs> trusting um, but it all starts with friendship that if you don't have a friendship there you want your 
you want to marry your, you know or be with your best friend basically that's someone that's similar to you and understands you and listens and has the time for you and respects you and has never called you anything bad it just sees only your beauty you know and sees your faults and your weaknesses but nurtures them in the process relationships are full of fun exciting adventurous things that can be done together but it takes two people to make a relationship work and never giving up and this is the problem i see now in current relationships is that it wasn't like it was many years ago we live in such a world now of impulse buying we want you know it's next day delivery uh, it's it's almost like our brain is wired to give up straight away or we, we're too impatient we want things to just be okay now and rather than making something work we end things why we shouldn't i don't do that i try not to you know i try to work th through things myself but sometimes if someone isn't willing to make something work then you have to step away if they don't love you you have to step away but most important thing is as i said these things in here that i think are important communication trust honesty um understanding fairness shared interests um but it takes a lot of work and although this uh, video is over 20 minutes long there are many and many other videos out there that support much deeper in the subject of understanding one another in a relationship so don't just um, listen to me, uh, listen to your own guidance, listen to other people out there with similar stories of what you're going through. And I hope that this information that I provided in this video has given you some insight into how relationships should perhaps be or work. And they all take work and, and time. Time is your best friend always. So thanks for watching. I hope this has helped in some way. And um, until next time, I'll speak to you soon. Goodbye.